That's uh, correct. Yes, and, and franchise then, record uh, streak. And then have they won their division? I guess you know the different machinations of it. Eight of the last eleven years. I mean, this has been yes. a pretty ridiculous run. And Barry Trotz has been what is this the fourth year now? He's been involved in all this. What what does he have to do to save his job? Because what they're doing in the regular season is remarkable. That's a great question. I, you know, I, I would have to imagine, you, you know, if, if things haven't gone too far down that road already, you would have to, you know, get this team past the second. You know, in the Ovechkin era, they've had some great teams. They've had three presidents' trophies. They've had um, a lot of expectations, and they still haven't gone beyond that second round. Uh, they haven't even gotten into the conference final, which, you know, if, if that never happens, that's going to be the one thing that everyone kind of remembers this era for. Um, you know, fortunately, you know, they've got another, they've got another, uh, whack at it this year. And, you know, you would think they probably got a, a, at least a couple more after this. Um, but you also look at some of the, the history of, of coach Trotz. He, he hasn't as a coach, you know, been past the second round and he's one of the all time winningest coaches in league history. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to make this too personal, but I don't understand why he hasn't received an extension already. I, I feel mm. like he has delivered the goods. This was a team that was kind of collectively an emotional wreck coming out of last year. And he knew he was going to have to kind of navigate, uh, you know, a, a locker room and some personalities and some things that there were some open wounds still from last year. And they got off to a rough start and they lost, you know, like 60 some odd goals in free agency and trades in the off season. And all he did was lead this team of, you know, the same core but with a lot of new pieces around them to another division title in arguably the roughest and most difficult division in hockey. And, you know, he's still kind of out there, you know. And I, I, I don't quite get it. I, I, you know, I understand that postseason success is also, a, 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 you know, a huge factor. But you can't have postseason success if you don't navigate all the stuff you have to get through over the course of seven and a half months in, in 82 regular season games. Mm -hmm. And I think he was pretty masterful in um, what he's been able to do this year. But clearly, you know, they want to see more. They, they, they want to see this team. They want to see this team get to the Eastern Conference final. And, we, and look, just look at, look at the ages of the, of the star players on this team. I mean, you know, that window is closing. It, it, you know, I think a lot of people thought it was closed after last year, or at least very, very close. And it's not. It's not. Uh, if you can get Ovechkin to continue to play at this level or some level close to this for a couple more years, you're going to still have a few more kicks at the can. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, what happens with, with Coach Trotz. And I, I think a lot of it's going to be determined by, you know, what happens uh, this postseason. But, you know, how many times in, in – the history of sports have you seen you know an organization or or, or a, a college program make a change at, at head coach because they couldn't get past you know over the hump in the postseason oh, yeah. and then the next year they don't even make the postseason yeah, it's like right. well, happens all the time you know, happens, <laughs> happens all the time. All the time so it's a it's a very um i guess dangerous road they're going down but i i, I guess the, the, they feel like that's um that's where they're at right now well, i can't remember who pointed this out last week but um we talked about this you know, last night, you know, I didn't watch it, but that was like a playoff game. It was a huge game. The, yeah. the, Peng, the Penguins had closed the gap to three points. If they win last night, it's one. Um, and that, and the Caps have been playing some meaningful games here the last three weeks, unlike last year where they right. won the division, like, uh, you know, with six, mm -hmm. six weeks left. I mean, mm -hmm. so that's got to help this team that they are playing some big-time games, like you said, high-pressure games late in the season. I would think that that has to carry over. Yeah, I, I think that's going to bode very well. I, I mean, it's just – it's kind of cliche, but, you know, we always talk about flipping that switch. It's just very difficult to do. I mean, I, I always kind of make the analogy of, you know, when you get the, to the postseason, you have to turn the volume, that volume knob, all the way to 10. You know, last year they tried to go from a 5 to a 10, and it was very hard to turn that knob all the way. And, you know, right now they're already at a 9. <laughs> so they don't have a whole lot of turning left to do. Uh, to, to get to the to the level um, uh, that you have to be to have success in in the playoffs, and I'll tell you, I've covered all the sports, man, and no sport changes more than hockey in the playoffs. It's a, almost a different game; like it's unrecognizable. It's like, wow, you know, I mean, it, it, you 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 turn on game one of the first round, and it's the intensity, 
um, uh, the attention to detail, the defensive zone cover. I mean, just how, how hard they play in their own end, the way you know players are throwing themselves in front of 100-mile-an-hour slap shots. It's just a different game. And to get yourself to that level, and I feel like they're a lot closer to that level right now than they were at this point last year, I think that's going to bode very well for this group. And you just look at last night's game, for example. I mean, the Penguins, the one thing the Capitals have struggled with um, all season uh, until last night was that they had on the road, and even at home, they had some teams that came in tired. And rest is a huge thing in, in the NHL. The Penguins played on Saturday night against the Canadians at home. It's very rare to have back-to-back home games in your home building, but they did. Last night, there was no allowing this team off the hook. I think some of it was they were really kind of jazzed up because it was Ovechkin's 1,000th game. But the fact that they didn't let them up off the mat after they scored that first goal, that was another positive sign to me.